Hi, Mike. How are you doing, Steve? Just you and me, I guess, huh? This isn't very good. No. Are we in the right meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I was beginning to wonder. We've had a problem in quorums here in the last couple months, unfortunately. So no, that's a, yeah, too bad. Um, a lot of people are, I don't think, like doing Zooms or whatever. And so I mean, we have a couple of committees where people just refuse to do it. What do you do when you have, you know, two members out of, you know, six or seven that you don't can't even get a quorum unless everybody else participates? So, right. Are you guys, how are you guys doing with? conservation commission actually we do quite well um everybody's on zoom and they you know they uh we have gr pretty good participation uh, some people often can't make it um but um you know uh pretty well attended that's um, great yeah yeah it is good um kind of nice you know it's also nice that it's recorded um you know so you can go back and kind of look at things and i i actually prefer these meetings being recorded um so yeah you know it gives everybody a chance to look at what's going on at their convenience you know they can't participate but um they can they can at least listen which can be pretty beneficial. Um, yeah, yeah. I, like see, I like seeing our, our town in action, you know, town government in action. It's, you know, it's a good thing. No, um, I agree. I don't think everybody agrees, but it's, um, it's um, you know, it's crazy. I think tonight they announced my daughter works in the healthcare industry and she's concerned because now they found the, the stealth uh, variant of the Omicron you know, virus, uh, COVID virus. So it's kind of craziness continuing. Yeah, I mean, it is scary, very scary. So, yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to be in the healthcare business right now. It's tough. She's, she had to do COVID testing for like two weeks in a row, and it got so bad in the office with some people come down with it and people quitting. That then the doctors just put all the uh, MAs and PAs into the office just to, to just do the paperwork behind the scenes, and the doctors just met with all the all the patients. Doris. Craziness. So. Richard Luther, how you doing, Luther? I'm well. How are you? Thank you. Unfortunately, it's only like Rich and I so far. That's not good. Uh, What's a, a dash code is a can you have an official meeting Mike, without a quorum? And I, uh, and I don't know why it wasn't on there. Mike Diamato set that up. Yeah, it's the uh, it's our our zip code 06. Okay, thanks, Mike. It's correct on the town's link. If um, yeah, I noticed it wasn't in the email distribution document, but when I went to the town website, it was uh, correct on the agenda posted there. Because I couldn't get in either. Yeah, the, uh, I just got a call from Bob, he was trying to get on. And uh, the uh, information that Mike Diamato put on uh, didn't include the uh, passcode to get on, which is uh, 06278. I guess uh, you guys figured it out. I remember from the last time. Thank it, it's the same one from the last time. I, I went back to the last one to find it. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, very rarely do I ever have to enter a passcode for Zoom. Well, you know, neither I. Uh, for some reason, I mean, unfortunately, neither Mike nor I set this up. This is all set up with. Uh, the folks in the town hall, uh, Mike, do you mind? Mike, are you or your representative on uh, tonight? Yes, he is, it looks like. That's the, the one or, down here. 
four, yeah, four, four oh one three seven four five eight four eight. I think it's Mike D'Amato or or John, is it? I'm not sure. All I know is this whole I'm not yeah, watching. Uh, yeah, Zoom um, Zoom has a little box to check if you don't want it, just that uh, don't want the passcode to be required. So at least when I had my paid for an account for a while. Yeah. Bob is on. He got on. Uh, I don't know who else knocks. They're going to get on. I'll, I'll answer my phone if someone calls me. But uh, this we... whole this whole Zoom thing is getting to be tiresome. Uh, although personally, <laughs> I'm not sure if I could make a meeting uh, physically at the town hall right now. Had a hard time getting up the stairs tonight. Hey, Rich, should we send out just a quick email to the members on uh, that passcode? Yeah, I'll I'll do that right now. Hi, Motorola Edge. Five G U W twenty twenty one. Yeah, I kind of, you know, I've kind of gone underground of the new. <laughs> oh, can I tell you? There you go. Couldn't do anything with the face, but at least I could do something with the name. There you go. How are you doing, Bob? Good. One. Yeah. Bob, wait, wait. Bye bye. Right. Waiting for the three feet of snow to come. What are they calling this? A Bob? What are they calling it a bomb genesis or something like that? All I mean, right. I yeah. That's. Go buy your milk and bread tomorrow, quick. <laughs> My uh, wife was shopping at Big Y today, and uh, about half the shelves were empty. Hmm. It's the next Armageddon. Yeah, craziness. Yep. I just like to see if these weathermen have stock in like uh, bread and milk or whatever. What is interesting is that they don't uh, tell you what the weather is going to be. They just kind of give some of the scenarios and say, tune in at 11, tune in tomorrow, whatever. All right, uh, please. But it, it looks like we're in for a foot or more of snow. You should try well, having would... to rely on their accuracy to make informed decisions about production farming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you still oh, got to, uh, Luther. You still got to feed the cows and the horses, no matter well, what. Right, but in terms of, uh, I've more than once checked every available forecast and gone in mode hay in the morning, and by lunchtime they've put rain in for the next day. Yeah. <laughs> well. We all know that the, there it's settled science on climate change. I believe wholeheartedly in climate change. I just think that it's ruined their their algorithm for how they predict the weather. The the all their predictive modeling is based on historical inputs that are rapidly skewing to a degree that makes it more and more challenging for them to predict and makes it harder and harder for all of us that are subject to it to to continue doing our our careers. Well, I attended a seminar one time with Dr. Mel. I don't know if you remember him. Maybe you're too young for him, Dr. Mel. No, I remember Dr. Mel. He, uh, he said that they did a, a, an experiment with the professionals, the kids that were in college, one, they wanted to become me meteorologists, and a coffee can. And they just, it was for the uh, three-day forecast. And they put in, and they found that the meteorologists that were professionals were about 18 to 19% right. Kids in college are like about 19 or 20 percent, and the coffee can was right about 25 percent of the time. And so, what does that tell you? Everybody go buy a coffee can and put rain or sun in it, or snow and sun, and, and you can predict yeah. the weather better. Than... Yeah, with, with all these major storms, I always say, well, we'll know for sure come Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, the, the, the thing that uh, there is was a, a favorite author of mine, Michael Creighton who's long since passed, 
but he wrote an editorial uh, before he passed, and it was talking about the uh, lunacy of this idea of settled science and climate change. And he, he made a rather good, you know, uh, everyone can say the, the climate is changing. No, no dispute on that. But what's causing the climate change? Is it because I'm driving my pickup truck and, uh, and someone else is driving their Prius or a Tesla? I mean, that's not impacting climate change. And especially within the US. I mean, we're such a minuscule uh, contributor of CO2. And whether or not CO2 truly is the driving force for climate change is the, the point he made. He, he put up all of the other things that were affecting climate change, including the uh, moisture in the atmosphere. I mean, uh, that is a, all the climate models discount moisture in the atmosphere, which is called clouds. And that affects climate change more than CO2 or even methane. So, so I mean, and, and Luther, you know, you're going to take all of your uh, manure and uh, put it in an a anaerobic digester? Oh, I would in a minute. Yeah, if that was, we don't have anywhere near the biomass that that would take, but um, uh, uh, bioenergy farming is massive in all across Europe, and they're having tremendous success with that uh, for both um electrical generation and for biomethane generation for natural gas distribution all across Europe. I mean, they're so, so, so far ahead of us on um, all of that technology. And there, it's actually a, a very closed loop cycle where the energy inputs that it takes to make the, the output of, of, of electrical energy and gas energy are only a portion of the digestate and then that digestate can be reapplied back to the production ground crops grown used in the energy production digestate recycled back it's a very closed loop system it's it's remarkable yeah i mean and i've got nothing against that other than uh we almost had a uh a, a waste treatment facility that was going to include a uh uh, anaerobic digester at exit 72 uh, in Ashford. This would be, you know, not uh, agricultural waste, but uh, plain old waste from commercial sources. And they were, their first phase was to put in a uh, facility that would process the uh, uh, bio waste. And the second phase was to put in the anaerobic digester. But the biggest issue was it would generate all sorts of traffic uh, on the back roads of Ashford going, going to the place. So luckily that didn't happen. But anyhow, we're not doing too good on a quorum so far. The only people we have as part of the EDC right now is Mike, myself, and Bob. Uh, I didn't get any feedback, and unfortunately, we have Gary Lawrence, uh, Ray Fenn, uh, and, uh, oh, help me, uh, at least one other member of the EDC that refused to, yeah, Terry Wakeman, that yeah, refused Margaret. to, Margaret said she would be here, but uh, she said she might be a little bit late. Uh, Christina, you're on, and I know that you need to, and we're not going to be able to go through our agenda since we don't have the quorum, but uh, I, I know that you were uh, basically doing interviews with uh, local businesses, so we would have items that could be put up on the EDC website. Uh, are those pretty much all in the bank at this point in time? So, uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, my, for some reason, my <coughs> webcam is not working, so it's just gonna be audio for me. Uh, so, uh, we, you have stuff through December. I had reached out to Hope and Wellness, Yagle, 
and Carrie's Transmissions and Henrietta House. And everybody said, oh, yeah, 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 we'll get you something. And I, they have not gotten me anything. And um, I've sent multiple emails. So I can try one more round of emails to see if I can get these people. I don't know if it was because um, I was reaching out to people. I think it was like probably late October, early November. Um, you know, and I, I sent follow-ups in December. Um, so I can try one more round, but I, for whatever reason, people were not getting back to me, unfortunately. But um, you had content through December. It looked good, Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, yeah, I would just say, since you have, um, based on what I invoiced you, you have about two hours of my time um, that you've already prepaid. Um, so if there are things that come up with the website that you need updated, or, you know, like a new report comes out or a new link or something like that, you know, you can definitely reach out to me um, and I can help out with, with updating the website. Question for you, Christina. Mm -hmm. um, you recommended a couple of people that could take over so we can do up future updates. Did I recommend people? Who or were you? Well, you that... asked me and I did not, <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't have any suggestions. Although actually now that I think about it, you know who might be an interesting person for you guys to reach out to is Shante Fields. She owns a business in town, I think called Sweet Little Details or something like that. Um, she's kind of active on the Ashford Facebook page and I think she works part-time at the library. Is this name ringing a bell for anybody? Yeah. I've seen her posts on, on Facebook. I didn't know she was into websites that much. Well, she has, like I said, so she has her own business. She makes like cupcakes and cakes and stuff like that. And she sells them a lot. And she organized like a business, like a small business thing that was at Knowlton Hall back in November, December. Um, but I think she is technologically savvy. I don't know that she's like a web developer, but I think she's probably savvy enough that she could probably update a website. Um, so anyway, I just, that's one person who just came to my mind that might be, and even if she can't update a website, I think she might be great for you guys to, since she does own a business. Yeah, the, one of the things you could do for us, um, I have, although every time I go on to it, and it's using WordPress, uh, the Republican Town Committee website, uh, I was the uh, upkeeper of that, but I don't go on there often enough that I have to literally like relearn it every time that I go on. But I, but you're using WordPress as the uh, uh, as, as the native way that you're updating. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. So I think if you could send uh, to Mike and I and uh, and to Bob, uh, you know the logon information and and the the passwords to get on, so we could at least have one of us to be administrators too, and then also uh, reach out to Shanti uh, and and see if she's interested in working with us uh, on on this and do that with an email to her with copies to us. Okay, sure, I can do that. Thank you. Because I, if, if everything is in there using a standard WordPress, are we, are we you, do we have a uh, word fence on the account too? Uh, word fence I'm not familiar with. What is that? It's basically a uh, firewall that prevents hacking of the website. Oh, I don't know. Um, that would be a question for, like, what is, is it Savage Systems that hosts the site? Um, different, different hosting companies have different ways of addressing that. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Yeah, the, the one site I'm familiar with is, uh, 
we use Reclaim Hosting as the uh, the host for the website and the one that renews the uh, uh, domain uh, license for the website. And then you see on the dashboard for the website, you see all that information. Uh, so I'm, if you can send a way to log on to the uh, dashboard for the website, I could see if that information's on there. Yeah. I can. Um, I would again. I would. I think there's a question for I, for Savage Systems, and I would. I would hope, given that this is uh, host Savage Systems hosts the town website as well, and um, I would hope that they had some real strict, you know, firewalls in place. But who yeah, knows? yeah, yeah. We kind of <laughs> piggybacked on what they were doing because they were doing the town website, and that way. Uh, all of the costs of keeping this up was kind of rolled into what Cheryl Baker was uh, doing. But I think as a first case, just to take a look at it, if you can send the login information and password to get on, uh, then you're the primary administrator on the site. So uh, we should be able to add an additional administrator. So we can look at what's on there. So, and then as a second, you know, reach out to Shanti Fields and she's if, see if she's interested in working with us. Okay, sure, I'll shoot her an email. Okay. Uh, and right now of the ones you've reached out to and as far as the local businesses, no one's got back to you. So there's no uh, well, information. Okay. Yeah, they did get back to me. They all said, oh, yeah, yeah, I would love to do that. Let me get back to you. And I just, you know, I just asked them to send me some bullets and I could compile it into a short write up. Um, they all said they get right back to me and then they didn't. And then I sent a follow up and then I followed up again. And I might have even followed up three times. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. People got distracted, I guess, or are too busy. It's such a weird time in everybody everybody's life right now. People are getting sick. People are taking care of relatives. Businesses are super busy or not busy enough. Like it's just so uncertain, everything. I would think that Margaretas would be very interested in being on it. Uh, Terry, probably not, you know, he's, he's very big on advertising, but I, you know, I would think that he might be interested in terms of doing something. Uh, and the other ones you mentioned were which ones? Yagel and Hope and Wellness. Uh, Yagel probably not as much, but Hope and Wellness definitely. Yeah, I, she I, said she was interested, but then she just didn't get back to me. Yeah. So I mean, if, if you could, you know, probably three things. Send Mike and I and Bob the information to be able to get on the, the uh, administrators of the site. Uh, send a thing to Shante Fields and then uh, also send the list of who you've talked to and where each one stands and then we can try to follow up with them. Sure, I can do that. Okay. Hey, Christina, thank you. Know, uh, congratulations for your election win to the Finance Committee. You, uh, knowing what's going to be going on in that committee uh, over the next two or three months, uh, you, even though you're an alternate, you should find yourself pretty uh, involved in and down to the nitty gritty of what's going on in the town. Yeah, that's for sure. And I have a meeting tomorrow night. So that's why I was trying to keep this one short as short as well. <laughs> yep. So good, good luck on it. And uh, uh, anything I can do to help you uh, navigate things on that, uh, let me know. Okay, thanks so much. All right, I'll yeah. sign off and I'll follow up with a couple of emails with you guys. Thanks so much. Christina, thanks, Christina. thank you so much. You've been a great help to our uh, commission. I, I think you've done a great job with your web stuff. So we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Happy to help. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. And just for uh, Steve and uh, Luther's edification, uh, Christine has been working with us to 
populate the EDC website and also to put news stories on it. And then with links, we put onto the Facebook page and we've done uh, several of the agricultural businesses is focused. Uh, the one that uh, I can think of right offhand is, uh, you know, uh, what's it, Terry's Plants? What's, no, what's the name of the-, of the Patrick's. Patrick's Plants. Patrick. Sean Patrick's. Sean yeah, Sean Patrick. Pat yeah. yeah, we promoted Sean Patrick, and we're committed to trying to promote uh, other agricultural businesses like what she was talking about. So we just need to get them on board to provide some write ups, and we can do a news story on the website, and then we can put it on the Our Town, Our Future Facebook page that will then link that to the website. Uh, Several of the ones we put up there have got like three, four hundred uh, hits. So it's been a pretty good way to promote uh, some of the businesses in town. And we'd be more than happy, Luther, to promote the uh, agricultural businesses too. Oh, that's that's wonderful. That's you know always helpful for some of these uh, retail operation uh, type farms. Um, you know, Sean Patrick's is a great example of, of that having impact that's uh that, that that's quite a nice operation they've got up there actually we we actually give them our business yep and uh we're, facebook has locked us out for doing boosts but we were doing like a 25 dollar boost uh sure. and when we with sean patrick's we did a boost on his and i think we got like 1500 uh uh, hits on Facebook. Uh, mm. We've got to, Facebook keeps on changing the rules to what you can do for boosts. So we've got to go through that uh, process again. But uh, we, we're committed to spending like uh, 25 bucks each time we do do one of the businesses. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, social media can be a very useful tool. You know, it's it's part of our um, part of our repertoire here uh, for Meg's business. Uh, my only my only utilization of it is is marketplace. I I just sell hay on marketplace. That's my only level of engagement. Um, I don't have a tremendous amount of bandwidth for it, but uh, it's a great yeah, well, it's a great yeah. commerce site for for you know it's sort of taken over from where Craigslist was and all of that. It's really a great you know, person to person, business to person commerce site. Um, but that's all I use it for. Meg uses it quite extensively for her side of the farm and has very, very deep um, online community and connections um, globally. And it's, it's worked yeah. brill brilliantly for her. Yeah, we also did the farmer's market as I recall too. Oh, that's smart too, yeah. So, so you know, I think as we had uh, said with one of our, pre were you on the, the meeting that we had with uh, Art Talmadge? I wasn't at that point. No, I, uh, I I didn't get to attend that one, but he did give us a briefing uh, at our next uh, meeting that we had um, and sort of brought us up to speed about your, uh, you know, the, the commission's interest in in promoting agriculture in the town which you know i think is smart and wonderful and um you know one of the things that people don't always understand when they think so you know people think in terms of economic development they think of it you know retail and commercial operations in terms of you know the things we see along 44 and 74 and, and whatnot but there's a quite a large subset of, of the economic uh, drivers in the town that are agriculture based. And uh, it was really heartening to those of us on the commission to have that level of engagement from this commission, seeing that, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of farming activity in this town. Yeah, the, uh, the Our Town, Our Future is not necessarily the Economic Development Commission but it was kind of spawned out of the EDC when it was first started. 
And uh, as a Facebook page, I think we're up to six, uh, 700 followers. So it's it gets quite a bit of traction on its own. But if, when you do those boosts and they're pretty you know reasonably priced, you can reach everyone in the town and the surrounding towns. So it's, it's a good way to promote businesses. I think one of the first ones we did was the uh, bait shop up in uh, Lake Chafee, Mike, was that right? Yeah, it was Ralph's bait shop. Yeah, and, th and that one got a, a tremendous number of, of hits that we promoted there. So, you know, if you, if you can encourage the uh, various business entities to, uh, you know, work with us to try to uh, provide some of the narratives and some pictures and things like that, you know, we'd be more than willing, you know, to help promote things, you know. In I'll town. mention it. I'll mention it. You know, it's a, it's a tricky thing. And, and I, I, you know, I can only speak um, for our own experiences, of course, <laughs> um, for our farm, but it's a, it's a tricky thing because um, your online branding and your, you know, your, your, your mechanism for pushing out content and, and reaching an audience, um, you kind of, what we have found anyways, and we've done some, you know, we've done some paid promotion and, and the majority of our work is not, we've, we've sort of found that they're because they're, they're developed sort of an organic, uh, uniqueness to each business, be it ours, be it another business where they sort of find their own voice, find their own tone. And, and I think because of that, people sometimes, um, have concern over, you know, embracing someone's willingness to promote them because they they're so used to having this own uh, effort and own own tone and own brand that they worry oh geez well if I do that is that going to somehow compromise what I do and so I think what what might be helpful is to let people know that they don't have to worry about that so much that it's really just a, an amplifier for that unique voice for that unique brand it's just a means of, of freely reaching a larger audience because um, i think it, that might be part of the people's hesitation yeah the, the it's not to replace uh, you know uh, abc farm with uh, the link on the artana future and the edc right. it's it's basically a a, a uh, advertising that links to their own page yeah it's almost like a you know, if this was back in the days of print, it would almost be like a featurette in a, in a, you know, a, a print article where you're, you're, you're highlighting a, a business and you're saying, this is what they do. Here's how you can learn more. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and basically it has all the, how to contact them and, you know, go yeah. directly to their sites. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think of like on Kitterbrook, there's a farm called oh, it's circle something. On is that Circle G? Yes. Something. I think it's Circle G. Yeah, but they're they're doing the bulk of their business, I think, on Facebook. Yeah, they they have a great great presence. And so what I'll do, uh, folks, you know, I'll we have a special meeting of the Ag Commission. We we were supposed to have a meeting this past Thursday. We weren't able to pull off, um, but we do have. Um, some topics that we need to discuss. So we've actually set up a special meeting for Monday. Um, and, um, you know, I will give an update at that meeting about, you know, the notion that this is still something that will be available uh, moving forward uh, to help okay. the, 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 the farms in town. Yeah, just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and, uh, you know, uh, we're obviously very interested in some of the larger business oriented developments. Uh, we've been trying uh, with, you know, no success yet on finding a use for the property at exit 72. And we're going to be also focused on the old wagon shed properties, which now the town has taken ownership of in terms of marketing that. So this, those are other things that we're doing. 
but we're also interested in, in supporting the agricultural businesses in town. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, um, and and so you know, it, it, you can certainly, you know, any of you feel free to join our our ag commission meetings if you you know want to learn more about um, the direction that these. Um, uh, proposed uh, tax revisions are going to head. Um, you know that's that's going to be on Monday's agenda, and then um, you know we can certainly circle back around. I don't honestly know if um, if there's going to be any development on these um, items this year or not. Um, we'll know more after Monday's meeting. Uh, we've got some. Concerns on timing, um, some concerns on um, communication and how, uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've had a bad um, kickoff to this. Uh, there's been some misinterpretations and some, some unfortunate things. So we have to, as a commission, um, meet and discuss, and the commission will have to make a determination as to um, the path they're going to take uh, as to um, this year, uh, this year's efforts. Um, uh, the commission feels like there's there's merit to these exemptions. You know, these are state uh, state statutes uh, that give the option to the town. But at the at the end of the day, it's the town's decision. Yeah, uh, Steve, you're on. Uh... Are you on in support of Luther, or are you on in on a different uh, topic? I'm actually uh, not in support of the tax abatements, and uh, I was planning to comment on that should it come up as an agenda item, but I'm, it's kind of looking like it's not going to. Um, I was going to yeah. ra raise some concerns about about how. Uh, uh, how the town should look very carefully at, at um, some of the language and some of the proposals um, uh, that are are being made. Um, there's some concern. There's uh, essentially the last proposal too is kind of an open-ended proposal. Um, uh, it's unknown what the town's tax liability, uh, what it's giving up. And, you know, if uh, some huge agricultural endeavor, multi-million dollar or something were to appear, then, uh, you know, that one should consider that and, and you know, make sure that uh, there's, um, uh, that's considered anyway. But you know, I don't think we're uh, we're discussing that formally, right? No, uh, right now, uh, whatever we're talking about is uh, off the record. Uh, I'm I'm the chairman of the commission, and Mike Gantick is the vice chairman, and Bob's a member and an active member of the commission. So there's only three of us here tonight. Uh, since you guys have been uh, considerate enough to take your time to log on, I, I figured it was only considerate to uh, let you at least put your th thoughts forth so the three of us can at least know what you're talking about. And hopefully we can get the whole commission together uh, at the next meeting. Great. Thank you, Dick. I appreciate that and uh, look forward to um, uh, using that opportunity. Yeah, and, and the same here. And, you know, I'd like to, you know, it's uh, part of the communication uh, that I was speaking about earlier goes to the notion that, you know, there's a, a lot of agriculture, a lot of farming, a lot of what happens in producing food for the world um, goes on 
in um, ways that a lot of people don't know about, you know, so, um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of technology um, that's leveraged on both surface farms, you know, throughout the country, you know, even here on our uh, our little farm in, in Ashford, I mean, we're using GPS guidance on our, on our equipment where we have, you know, real time uh, harvest data management for, uh, you know, getting data inputs as we're actually making our hay so that we know what we're doing and what we're making. And there's, you know, a tremendous amount of technology that is being leveraged, you know, the people think that the the quintessential, you know, New England farm, the the dairy farm and all that. And, 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 and to some extent it is. Um, and to some extent, people don't also currently understand what a dairy farm in this day and age entails, you know, millions of dollars of equipment and robotic milking that's done fully autonomously and, uh, you know, customized computer feed plans that have transponders on every single animal. And as the animal walks in to be milked, the computer reads the transponder and knows who the cow is, knows when they gave birth, knows what their average milk yields are, gives them an additional dosing of feed to compensate for their production rates. Like there's a tremendous amount of technology automation and sophistication in agriculture these days. <clears throat> and I think that um, while it's entirely appropriate for the town to be diligent and thoughtful in approaching these um, potential changes, um, I think the Ag Commission should have done a better job of um, educating the community about what modern agriculture really is so that people have an understanding about what agriculture truly is so they can have an inf informed basis of, of an opinion and, and, and really help to um, engage in the dialogue. And, you know, that's hopefully going to be part of our discussion Monday is, you know, we've been working on this uh, language for a long time for, for well over a year, um, but it's been, as you folks probably know, it's been very difficult to uh, meet, <laughs> to um, get people to have input and to execute the, the responsibility of, of a commission. And so it's taken a long time to pull these together. And once the commission finally had a good meeting and was able to review and approve these things. The commission decided, hey, let's get this out there for discussion. And unfortunately, it probably should have been, okay, what else are we missing? <laughs> what other kinds of education need to go out with this communication? What other conversations need to be had? Um, yeah. And and that's that's where I hope we can take our dialogue on Monday's meeting. Um, is how do we better engage with the community so that they understand the context of what is modern agriculture? How does this proposed language change impact it? And what's the reality of that all look like? Um, because, you know, even if this was a, you know, a, if this was a, a, you know, honestly, one of the, not to name names, like one of the farms we looked at as a commission pretty hard with this kind of a language change proposal was actually Sean Patrick's because right now they don't qualify for a 50% abatement in the town um, because the town, when they adopted this ordinance chose to omit nurseries, chose to omit nurseries and vegetable producers and um, the hard non-traditional farm category. Um, and we thought, well, shoot, I'll bet you that you know, I'll bet you that they would appreciate the opportunity to compete for a tax abatement. So why not include that language? Um, and, so. You know, I, th I think Luther, the, and I'm addressing a little bit of Steve's comment. Uh, one of the things that uh, we thought would be a potential for uh, either exit 72 or 
the old wagon shape properties would be a uh, large scale uh, marijuana uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole reason we would be pushing that is we would want to uh, find additional tax re revenue for the of town. Of course, of so course. And, and to, to, and I can speak directly to that and you would probably be happy to hear this and hopefully Steve would be happy to hear this. Um, the state of Connecticut does not define the cultivation, harvest and distribution of cannabis as agriculture, period. Oh, that's interesting. So it's it's regulated completely differently <laughs> from agriculture. It doesn't even fall under DOAC. It's actually closer to pharmaceutical regulation than anything else. And so, uh, no cannabis operation of any size, scale, or or impact would even be able to apply for these tax abatements. Period. Um, so, so that's that's something of note. And again, that goes back to the communication part of uh this whole thing and and you know in, in in an abundance of transparency it's also really important uh for the three of you to understand um part of the conflict here uh with the timing and the communication is that um our family is also looking to do the next evolution of our farm and it's a very, we're all very, um, we all feel very strongly about the project. We all really believe in the project, but it's going to be a large agricultural um, installation on the farm here to grow food in greenhouses. And um, there's been some unfortunate misinterpretation that because I'm on the Ag Commission, and because the Ag Commission is trying to advance this language that we've been working on for well over a year, um, that somehow there's a, a lot of self-interest at play. Um, you know, to be, uh, again, abundantly transparent, uh, we don't qualify for this 50% abatement currently. Um, and even if the 50% abatement were not available to us for growing vegetables, it makes no meaningful difference to us uh, in pursuit of the project, um, but it's, an, it's another unfortunate side effect of, of not having a good communication strategy. I mean, communication's everything. Um, so, you know, we are going to be putting six greenhouses uh, on the farm. Um, this, these proposals have, minimal impact to us. Um, I personally, uh, I mean, it, it's not accurate to say I don't care because I do care. I care a lot about agriculture in this town. That's why I volunteer to be on commissions. It's why I join meetings. It's why I participate actively in civil engagement wherever possible. I really care a lot. Um, so I do care, but if, if we can't have access to it, it's not going to deter us. I mean, we've worked our tails off making this farm what it is. You know, if, if we were the type of people that were going to be deterred because we couldn't have access to a, a tax program, we'd have never gotten anything done. You know, so. Um, well, Luther, I, I think the key thing that I looked <clears throat> over all the packages that you sent out, uh, and it sounds like you're still kind of. Uh, misogyn that was what you want to propose uh, you know if you can kind of keep us in the loop with what you finally come up with the proposal you know you know we, we definitely would you know take that under consideration uh, and 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 literally i i had a chance to uh, there's a hydrophonic uh greenhouse farm on the road to uh, eastford from westford I know I can't think of the name of it, but I had a chance to go through that uh, about a year ago, and I was amazed at everything that they were doing there. Uh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know there was one there. Um, we would yeah. we will not be doing hydroponics. We actually will be doing um, food grown in soil, um, uh, mainly because 
we want to do a full organic operation and hydroponic is not organic. Um, so we want to do a full organic regenerative uh, carbon negative, um, good for the planet kind of a development here. We're actually transitioning the entire farm to a full organic operation. Um, our last hurdle for that was getting a good fertilizer source, which I'm really still trying to lock down. Um, that's proving difficult and expensive. Um, but we're we're going to be here. We've been here for 11, 12 years. I think we've made the farm. I don't know how many of you guys have driven by us on Wormwood Hill, but I mean, the, we've, I, th I really feel like we've made the farm significantly better than we found it. Um, you know, we live here, so we care a lot. And I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna continue to make it a lot better with what we're looking to do. I mean, we're- Yeah, Luther, we're, we're, I've, I've, yeah. I've driven by your farm. <clears throat> I will say one thing since I live in, in the Westford part of town, <laughs> You sure as hell look a lot better than the bottle farm. Oh yeah, but Nick is a really good guy, uh, and yeah. he's doing some really interesting things there. You should actually, but it's also it's it's good good feedback to hear because um, again, I think this goes to the outreach and communication and education that we could do. Because, boy, you know, Nick is working his tail off there on that property and he deserves a lot of credit for some of the things he's doing there he's he's really smart about how he is um in engaging the land and how he's transforming the land but it's also um they're 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 on a you know pretty real world budget and i mean not to say that we're not but we've we've just i think thrown more money at our place so far and uh, I have faith that he's going to get that place where he wants it to be. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just uh, talking about some of the drives by. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can I can understand that. Um, okay. We struggle with that here too. You know, I yeah. I I always I always see the flaws, and I always worry about what people think of us when they drive by. <laughs> okay, so so like like in a summary, Luther, whatever you guys come up with, okay. uh, send it to us. Mike, uh, Bob, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I, I'm good. Um, sounds great, though, Luther, uh, you know, that you're putting a lot of effort into making your farm very sustainable, and that's very nice to hear. Thank you. Thought. And when, when, when we get a little bit closer um, to launching, um, if you guys, if you folks have any interest, I can certainly put together a quick deck and, and share the project with you guys if, it's, if there's interest in learning about it. Um, it's, it's some pretty interesting stuff. And, you know, again, unfortunately, people don't, you know, so the hydroponic farms, people don't always understand that that's still farming. Just mm -hmm. like greenhouses, that's still farming. You know, the, there's you know, if you're growing food, you're farming. If you're growing food indoors or outdoors, you're still farming. And so, um, you know, it, it's it's a it's always a bit of a struggle when when you're doing a project like this to learn how to tell people about it. So, even from a standpoint of having more people to learn how to tell about the project, it, it probably would be a huge benefit for me because I can always do a better job of that. Uh, the I, only thing I would ask is I'm, I'm, uh, where we could get copies of the latest information. I'm not sure where the latest. A little of the me. tax proposals? Yeah. 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 So currently what you have is what exists. Um, this was um, a starting point. Uh, you know, the, the Board of Selectmen, you know, will uh, do with it as they see fit. Um, change it how they see fit. You know, it is not our um, task. It's not our, uh, I'm looking for the right word here, guys, but it's, it, it is not within our authority to move this any further than where we've taken it. All we've done is made a suggestion to the Board of Selectmen and between the Board and the Board of Finance and Town Council, uh, you know, Legal Council and whoever they see fit to bring into the process, they'll kind of tweak it from there and, and we'll have to try to find a way to get distribution of whatever changes they make. Um, 
the Ag Commission, quite honestly, may or may not. Um, it'll be, it's going to be up to the commission as to whether or not the commission um, asks the board of selectmen to withdraw this petition until the commission can uh, do a better job of communicating uh, to the town about it and educating the town about it so that everyone has a chance to be informed and, and contribute to the process. Um, that's going to be something we should hopefully know after Monday's meeting. And I'll share the outcome of that with you folks, if you like. Yeah, that'll help us. Steve, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. I'll be interested in hearing more. Okay. Anyone else tonight? Uh, we've got the girls on uh, plan right now on uh, SNY. Anyone's Yukon basketball fans? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I haven't partaken in a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Luther. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Hey, uh, thanks, guys. Good evening with Stay us. Be healthy. Take care. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Hey, um, we're going to have to figure out a better way to get our, our quorum uh, Mike, uh, yeah. I'm not sure where I'm going to be next week, next month, but uh, <clears throat> we'll see how things are going. I could just about make it up the stairs to my uh, office, office tonight. But the, well, yeah, we'll, we should reach out to the rest of the membership. You know, I know the two Johns and Margaret and see, uh, I don't know, they didn't, didn't respond to coming or not coming, so. Well, Margaret has said said she was going to come, uh, and uh, John has been coming on. So, uh, and I've been back and forth with Ray on a few things too. Uh, uh, one of the items that he sent me is uh, Bill Folletti wanted us to take the lead on uh, uh, replacing some of the uh, "Welcome to Ashford" signs, and I told him I said, you know. Got a lot of things in our plate. I don't know if that's the number one thing we want to do. I mean, it's 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 merely paying for it and uh, having the uh, you know town garage do the installation. So, and we do have some funds left in the budget to spend before the end of the fiscal year. So we need to figure out uh, what we might do with those. So, but we can't do that tonight. It's not an official meeting. Okay. Well, may I'll reach out to the two Johns and see um, what's going on. Yeah, and I, I'm hopefully going to, we'll have to see. I'm, uh, I'm going in for a special kind of MRI on the 17th of next month. And then hopefully after that, I can get surgery scheduled not too far after that. So we'll. See how that goes. Dragging out, isn't it? Well, I don't know if I told you, but uh, then I'll share it with who's ever here. I, it, you know, after the aborted surgery, it, it said, told me that I, I needed to go off and get a second opinion. And this Hartford Medical Group, it's a very tight knit group. I went to three different doctors that are part of that group. And every one of them then turned me down and said that they wouldn't operate on me. And finally, I found a doctor <clears throat> out of St. Francis, and uh, he's part of the Trinity Health Group, and he's willing to uh, uh, entertain doing something less uh, radical than what was proposed before, as far as fusing my back from the top to the bottom. So, you know... But it's still right now with all of the COVID stuff that's going on, getting a slot for surgery is 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 taking longer and longer. Matter of fact, even getting in for the MRI because there's a special MRI unit that St. Francis says that he wanted to use, which is a color enhanced uh, contrast MRI, and you know the earliest date I could get for that was the seventeenth. Of next month so everything's just going longer and longer and longer 
right? Well, sorry to well, hear that. Well, it's unfortunately, this is part of the problems of arthritis and growing old. Yeah. So, but uh, we'll hopefully, you know, find a way to get it all fixed. So, at any rate, Mike, I'll keep the loop uh, tight with you and you can take the, the reins if need be. Okay, we, we just need a few more horses in front of the reins, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, hey guys, thanks for turning out. Take care, guys. You guys, you. All. take care. Good evening. Night. Here's night. night. Yep. Yeah.